Hello YouTube. Cubic released a video a little while ago uh, for a storage system that incorporated a bunch of different components created by the storage tech community. He used my box sorter in this setup, but was able to find a fundamental flaw with the system in that every once in a while the box wouldn't time correctly and it would just completely destroy the whole system. Um, I've spent some time trying to figure out what the problem was and I've solved that issue, but along the way some other developments have been made in helping to create a better box sorter overall. And I want to share that concept with you first and some new box sorters that have come out of this new development, um, specifically one dev uh, developed by Rafku. And I really hope I'm pronouncing that right, but um, I'm going with the pronunciation that he supplied to me. So. What you see in front of you here is your typical um, dropper line that's been used in a bunch of the box orders in the past. So usually what you do is you have your item wanker, as it's been lovingly called, that splits the item out of a shulker box. It sends the item down one path, the shulker box down another, and you use a series of item sorters to match them to one slice and recombine those items. This new trick allows you not to have to use an actual item sorter. And what we do is we're actually taking signal from these droppers. Now, you'll notice here, I've got, take those out, and I'm just gonna clear my inventory real quick. Um, I've got a bunch of items in this first dropper, and then nothing along the way. You can tell with the comparators here all off. Once this is triggered, you'll see that none of those comparators actually recognized a signal, but the item went all the way through. This is because comparators take a little bit longer to recognize a signal because of their tile tick priority. So you trigger, we're not getting any signal, and the item arrives. Um, this concept was identified by a player named Crane, and when you point a comparator or a repeater into another comparator or repeater, you actually change the tile tick priority for that item. So if we put a bunch of repeaters along the way here and then triggered this, you'll notice that it starts to recognize the signal. This can be used to help improve our box sorters so that they don't require um, an actual item sorter. Now even better, you don't need to put the repeaters to read the signal, but you can put them this way because it still updates the tile tick priority, but then you're not taking any other uh, block updates from the repeaters. So like this, and you'll see that the comparators trigger along the way. So with that in mind, and with trying to build a new box sorter that suited Crane's, or not Crane, but uh, Cubic's requirements, where we are still operating at hopper speed, we're not buffering any boxes, we have the ability to lock a slice if there's overflow, and we fix the problem that can break after 10,000 boxes or so. Um, so this is the, again, item wanker that's been lovingly referred to that separates the box and the item. And the key here to solve for that, that problem that breaks every 10,000 boxes or so is just to power this um, hopper here. So as long as you're powering that with the clock, you stabilize the input because there's some randomness that happens when you break the box and it turns into an item entity um, so that it's consistently arriving into this dropper at the same time. So th this has been tested over hours and days of boxes using um, carpet commands and it is 100% reliable. But yeah, this, this version here is pretty close to what Cubic just released in his most recent video. Um, this is the box sorter that he's using there, uh, albeit he's changed it a little bit to, 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 for how he's locking it. But ultimately, we can see here, I don't know if I have the boxes already in there, no. But let's pump a bunch through. So, um, actually, let's look at these hoppers. These are all blocked off in these back four slots and the item that you want to sort for in the first, and you only need one. So there we go. You'll see that I'm sorting all along the way and there are no actual item sorters here. So the signal is coming from this tile tick priority and I don't actually need these facing that way. As I had mentioned, we're gonna go this way. And I think I've set 
yeah, this slice here is set to overflow. So you'll see what happens when it, it locks a specific slice. Again, I should mention that this is completely hopper locked. So these two hoppers here are locked by this system back here, which is triggered from the clock. This hopper here is uh, locked through um, a CUD system. So this has been pushed in and pulled back. It's still holding power. And this one is locked just naturally from this. These two are locked from the system that feeds that way, as well as the uh, specific slice locks. Okay, so let's take a chest of all these different shulkers, which is this. I'll just do one and we'll pop it in there. So you'll see here where we're locking that hopper. And that's stabilizing the input again. Oh, and it already did its thing and it's locked itself all back up. So you'll see here, this one is now set to overflow because we had already too many orange shulker boxes in there. So we can see here, there's probably one box in. Yep, but our other two would have went to overflow. So the item overflowed and the box overflowed. You could set a, a system at the end here that just recombines those and puts them out to wherever you want to handle them. You could even have two slices that, that handle pumpkin shulkers if you really want to. But this should have sorted all of our shulkers, recombining the items. Like so. Well, that one doesn't matter. But here is our melons, our redstone dust, our emeralds, diamonds, our bone, and our yellow concrete. So everything's back where it needs to be. There are no items buffered in any of these hoppers. Um, our hoppers are fully locked. Oh, in this design, because I'm using two hoppers here, um, you have to put a full stack in the second hopper and a single item in the top. So this one's a little bit, really the, the benefit of this design is that you have the selective slice locking. The de the design I'm gonna share by Rafku is, is gonna have a different overflow protection, but it's a much more simplified box sorter. This one, again, is the one that Cubic is using. And if you're looking for selective slice locking, this is the one that you wanna use. Rafku's design is a little bit more compact. And this part here doesn't have the, um, the hopper locking built into it yet. I will share the two versions of that shortly, but this just shows how much more this has been simplified. So now you're only dealing with one hopper here below. So you only need one item and the back four filled. And this is where you would do your locks for the two hoppers that are included here. Um, but really, same system where it's using the tile tick priority trick devised by Crane to trigger um, the slice. Uh, the small difference here is that in this design, we're actually triggering a row of observers to lock these hoppers at the right time following the tile tick priority updates. So that it'll get to the right slice once the item drops into the right hopper, it won't lock the hopper here. It'll flow into the dropper and get triggered through um, this signal read right here. So there's a lot going on with this one as well. I think we're all empty. And let's take a shulker full of these, or a chest full of these shulkers and pop it in. You'll notice the item wanker is a little bit different here. And that's specifically because this design can only handle hopper speed box sort. So if you get an odd interval in between, it's going to break because these hoppers are going to be on cooldown and they're not going to push the item into it. So there's a small trick that we've devised here that if we get a break in the interval, it's going to lock the hopper temporarily and unlock itself after 20 game ticks. Um, to keep things moving at the, the acceptable speed for the hopper cooldowns. Um, let's just make sure that that's sorted all correctly. Yeah, there's all of our emerald shulkers, our diamond shulkers, and our cobblestone shulkers. Um, I'm just going to pop a few items in here. Uh, let's just grab them from here. So when I throw it in, there, you'll see it locked itself and it released. Locked itself and released. So this system here, 
what we're doing is we're actually budding this piston with these items on it and then we're sending in an update after 20 game ticks so as soon as this goes off it buds 20 game ticks later we reset went off you'll see it pulled back and the 20 game ticks so the reason that this buds has to do with i guess it's sort of similar to this system here where if i were to unpower this it's going to power itself through quasi connectivity but because it's updating itself it's going to keep pumping back and forth Now this system here, the one difference is this one single, single block. This, for whatever reason, prevents the piston from updating itself. So it'll close and it'll bud, just like this. So if we were to update the piston, it'll pump. Only because of that block. If I took that block away, we end up with this system here. But that's the same concept that's being used here. Because we have the extra block in the way, Instead of it getting powered and pushed back out, it's going to butt itself, and then we provide it the update, and this allows us to keep the flow at hopper speed only. Um, I've set the item wanker in isolation on its own over at the side here. You'll see we're still locking this hopper to make sure that we're um, keeping the, the, the timing of that box catch consistent, and that way it's not going to break. Um, other thing to mention with this design is that it's similar to Samus's design in that you can actually sort up to five different shulker box types per hopper. If we wanted to sort um, the yellow concrete into that last slice, I'll just go grab a yellow concrete box quickly. And we'll put a chest on there and I'll do three of those yellow shulkers. That should catch them into this slice. One, two, three. Perfect. So it actually gives us a little bit more, um, it's, it's just a little bit more useful overall in that if we want to catch like five different categories of redstone into the one box, then then we can absolutely do that. So super versatile system, it's, it's small, it's not directional like I was using before. There's no buffered box like I was using before. It maintains hopper speed. Like th this thing is is pretty darn useful and I, I expect to see it being used in, in a whole bunch of different scenarios. Now this one also doesn't have the overflow built into it in the format that I've built here. So if you're looking for just a quick, easy shulker box sorter that's hopper speed, then this is what you want to use. If you don't care about locking the hoppers, if you don't care about overflow, this is your very simple system here. But this already has overflow technically built into it with this dropper. If we move these observers back one, we could actually just drop any overflow out into a water stream to be collected elsewhere, and then you handle your boxes however you want. That is actually set up in these schematics that we're going to share here. Um, for a full design that includes the hopper locking as well as the overflow. So this is the same system that you saw over there, but set up in a 1.12 format and a 1.16 format. Um, you'll see here where the observers are pulled back one so that we have the overflow built in. We have our locking lines here for these two hoppers and we have our locking line here for this hopper. So fully hopper locked, same as, as this setup here, we're using a series of droppers to, to do the locking with a bit of a, an update priority trick as well for the line of observers. Um, and yeah, this is 1.12 compatible, 1.116 plus compatible, uh, and you know, this one's trying to use a lot less observers than the 1.12 version. So we'll just drop some boxes in here. You'll see we've got a pretty good variety. I think it's the same box here. Drop that in. We're still working. So it's like all the boxes were ordered sequentially and they were locked back up. So we should have. I think I already had three in there, but there should have only been three per type. Or maybe I had six, I don't know, I'll double check. There's
there's our melon, and all those items are, are sorted accordingly. Yeah, I only had three, so I had some already in there. And we'll check the 1.12 version. Same thing here. Everything is sorted. So like I said, this is a, a truly community collaboration. A, a whole bunch of people contributed to Rafku's final design. Uh, Phrygian for some of the command block uh, testing scripts. I am Barcelona for the 1.12 hopper locking system. Optic Nerve and Sam for the 1.16 hopper locking system. C5 for inspiration on the design. Um, I think both Binary and Crane had some contribution to the original Tiletic priority concept and design. B. Adamson or Badamson, sorry for pronunciation, on, on some of the logic. Um, Boyan for, for helping us test through some of this and, and bouncing some ideas off of. Um, Again, Rafku for the overall design, and I contributed with the with the item wanker itself here too. So, a lot of people went into this. I'm I'm again super impressed with the storage tech community and everything that we've been able to develop so far. And this just goes to show that you know we can create some really cool things as we're all working together on this and and eventually come up with that that ultimate storage system. Again, big thank you to Cubic for the inspiration to resolve a bunch of the problems that he was able to identify with my original um, hopper speed design. Um, and I think we've we've come up with a, a pretty cool standard here for uh, hopper speed box sorting. Anyway, I will provide this world download along with the schematics for the two designs that you see behind me. And uh, Thank you again, YouTube, and have a great day.